Nothing can be as dainty, delicate and desirable as porcelain to adorn a dining table, a showcase or cabinet of the proud owner, be it a prince or a noble admirer of aesthetic elegance and beauty. The attraction of porcelain is irresistible. A flight of fantasy can take you to faraway times when European nobility cherished, treasured and coveted porcelain with an unbridled passion. Such is the attraction of porcelain. It can give wings to your imagination. Salarjam was both a prince and a patron of the arts. And as an ardent collector, he found the lure of porcelain irresistible. He bought beautiful porcelain objects from all the famous porcelain manufacturers of Europe. Many of the porcelain manufacturers are globally renowned for their supremacy in the trade and art of porcelain making since centuries. During 17th century, Sivers, Dresden, Worcester, Chelsea, the Royal Derby and the Vienna were a few good examples. Many of porcelain manufacturers are globally renowned for their supremacy in the trade and art of porcelain making since centuries. Seventeenth century servers from France, Dresden belonging to the same period from Germany, Worcester and Royal Derby and Chelsea from England are still in production and still hold their prestige, esteem and value. You don't have to go too far to see beautiful porcelain objects from these legendary factories of Europe. The porcelain gallery at Salajan Museum has rare, fine and unusual pieces from these periods on display. Salajan wanted to represent every illustrious name in his collection and the delightful array in this gallery are brilliant testimonies. These exhibits never fail to evoke a sense of splendor and refinement in every visitor. Today we encounter the presence of porcelain, the thin, white-bodied ceramic ware everywhere in our daily lives, from tableware to bathroom fixtures to space shuttle tiles. Over time, we have lost the awareness that for centuries, porcelain was a rarity, a treasured material produced exclusively in Asia. Porcelain's development in China was a technological feat. Chinese porcelain were respected treasures, coveted princely gifts, considered objects of wonder. European royalty spent vast sums from their treasuries to buy Asian porcelain. Europe's first porcelain factory was established at Mason. Its porcelain was popularly known as white gold. As the cradle of porcelain making in Europe, Mason came to be more popularly known as Dresden. As pretty as Dresden, China is a compliment we often hear the English say. True enough Dresden porcelain ware is exquisitely beautiful. At Salajan Museum, we get to see the beauty right before our eyes. 19th century goblets, vases, dolls, fruit stands. The Dresden collection of Salajang boasts some delightfully crafted pieces.
a shepherd and shepherdess with pleasant pastoral colors, an energetic fawn and a boy plucking fruit from a tree are objects that strike your eye with their beauty. An imitation of famed original Count Brule's tailor is a fine representation embodying all its verity the satirical depiction of the haughty attitude of the tailor. Porcelain lends itself to portraiture under the skillful hands of the artist and a majestic white porcelain portrait of Frederick the Great, a Prussian emperor, stands out as a regal piece. After Mason, a flurry of European porcelain ventures began. Patrons derived great prestige from their porcelain manufactories. Throughout the 18th century, porcelain production continued to flourish under princely enterprises in Europe. A granddaughter of Augustus married Charles, King of Naples, a porcelain manufactory was founded in 1743 on the grounds of the couple's royal palace at Capodimont. The Salatin Museum possesses around 50 Capodimont's porcelains. These quaint curiosities developed for pressure of ownership include dancing figures, soldiers and many other novel items. Capodimont can be recognized by their crisp, fragile and thin delicacy. The dancing figures in Sir Larjung's collection are exceptional in that they actually convey the joy and gaiety of movements. Not to be missed are the swirls of their costumes which have been masterfully crafted in porcelain. Apart from the group, a dancing couple and two dancing ladies are also very noticeable for their graceful stances. Not to be outdone in any art by the rest of Europe, Vienna, the heart of classic arts, became another hub of exotic porcelain works. The Vienna Porcelain Factory, acquired by the Austrian government, produced some of the finest and most sought-after porcelain works in the world. Gifted art directors and artists were involved in the production. Salajung Museum can boast of a good number of Viennese porcelains. The Viennese were flamboyant in their art and a fabulous vase on display at Salajung Museum with bird handles is beautifully highlighted with a painting of a pastoral scene, a true antique belonging to the year 1780. There are many more enchanting items from Royal Vienna displayed at Salajung Museum and these include painted porcelain cabinet plates which were very popular and most sought after by collectors even today. These rare pieces are said to be painted in the style of Angelic Kaufman, a renowned 17th century lady painter.
some splendid Venus tea service sets with delicate decorated classical female figures are on view to proclaim the superiority of Venus artistry. Porcelain was a la mode at the French court. The servers factory, which was established under royal patronage, became highly popular. King Louis XV and XVII of France were generous patrons of the art. Madame de Pompadour, the powerful and influential mistress of Louis XV, encouraged the art with verb. Her inspiration led Louis XV to generously support the Royal Severs factory. Louis XVI continued his father's interests and Severs Porcelain later found favour even with Napoleon. The factory never ceased to produce its magnificent products and still continues to do so. Famous painters embellished the products with their paintings, which is evident in Salarjung's entrancing antique pieces. Severs porcelain products are imperial, ornate and truly fit for kings. The trademark of Severs porcelain is gorgeous decorations and vivid colouring, exquisite painting and charming gilt bronze mounts. Severs stands out majestically in any collection. Salajung bought many pieces from the house of Severs and they stand displayed royally as an important part of his collection. Singular objects from Severs that adorn Salajung's gallery, mostly belonging to the 18th and 19th century, are vibrantly decorated vases, skillfully coloured, embossed and gilded plates, beautifully designed and painted vanity boxes, toys, trays and musical instruments. Tableware which perhaps graced the homes of noblemen includes superbly decorated tea and coffee services, pots for milk, sugar, butter and teapots. A priceless pair of royal blue vases, part of an empress choice collection are among the rare exhibits at Salajan Museum.
embossed with the royal emblem of the queen the royal civil's factory custom designed a 744 piece set for empress Catherine the second of Russia which took three years in the making like so many royal personages the Empress greatly favored Sivers porcelain Sivers porcelain belonging to the Empire period constitute a large part of Salar Jung's collection These items reflect the empire taste which favored extensive gilding, rich border designs and elaborate figural scenes. Outstanding among these are models of Napoleon and Josephine produced in 1806. The exclusive privilege of gilding enjoyed by the Sivers factory is amply demonstrated by finely worked gilt bronze mounts found on many of the Sivers porcelain in the museum. I have come here with my children to show them Salar Jing Museum which is very famous and uh, which has collected uh, articles which date more than 200 years back. So this place is the porcelain wing. And here we get to see uh, most famous Dresden porcelain dolls. In this porcelain section, they have uh, porcelain articles from Dresden, Germany. And uh, as we all know, Dresden uh, dolls are very, very famous. We have been reading it since childhood and I'm so happy to see they have got such a fine collection. Also finding a place of honor here is Wedgwood from England and Servers from France. They have an excellent collection here and my children and we feel very happy to be here today. As an avid collector with a love for all things beautiful, Salar Jung's English porcelain collection comes from all of the five porcelain factories which England was so famous for, Chelsea, Bow, Derby, Worcester and Bristol besides equally important names like Swansea, Coalport, Spurred and Minton. The English porcelain collection is a much admired section of Salajung porcelain gallery. Besides the more renowned names, there are very attractive and exquisite pieces from Dalton, Staffordshire and Colport which are worth attention. Among the most popular porcelain figures produced from England were small figures or toys, charming sentimental trifles such as scent bottles, flasks, snuff and patch boxes, flowers and little figures which were used as gifts and souvenirs. Counted among Salajung Museum's important assets are a set of Chelsea small figures bearing the gold anchor mark used by the Chelsea Porcelain Factory after 1756. Royal Crown Derby, the second oldest English porcelain manufactory, was renowned for its bone china and produced tableware and unique and ornamental items. Some derby rare displays at Salajung Museum include painted vases in Derby's highly artistic style.
Porcelain has been made in Worcester since 1751. The factory's products are still among the most sought after English porcelains today. The use of blue and white decoration and technique of transfer printing sets was sister apart as a class by itself. The objects manufactured bore the name of the managements down the years, hence we have flight, bar and bar and chamberlains from Worcester. Worcester factory is represented at Salajang Museum by some beautiful decorative flower pots of the flight, bar and bar period and a few delightfully made figures of the Chamberlain's period. There are numerous statuettes and vases belonging to the Royal Worcester or the most recent period in the collection. Salajang acquired the most exotic examples of European porcelain, creating a collection reflecting the galaxy of major European manufacturers. Worcester, Mason and Severs occupy pride of place in the museum. These famous names conjure up lavish scenes of English nobility, European royalty and the aristocratic lifestyles which gave importance given to porcelain, sometimes exalting it to the stature of gold. Salajang's affinity for art was a well-known fact almost all over Europe and the Salajangs received a royal memento from the Queen of England herself. This royal gift is a porcelain vase, one of the 50 produced to commemorate the Queen's Diamond Jubilee in 1897, presented in all probability to Salajang I. Another item which deserves special mention as a personal acquisition of Salajang I is a royal blue vase which is said to have been created at Minton's Stroke upon Trent, England in the presence of the Nawab in 1876. Surrounded by a gallery of treasures, we are bewitched by the beauty and marvel at the man who made this happen.
Kalarjan's fine porcelain collection kept us enthralled with its rich variety. One would have hardly guessed the importance enjoyed by porcelain in the royal houses of Europe. Salarjan's porcelain gallery conveyed to us a sense of the exalted position that early porcelain held and the intriguing stories surrounding it. In our next episode, we will explore the world of painted art in Europe. The Salarjan Gallery of European Painting is your gateway to a visually stunning experience. So stay until next week. The best is yet to come.